Hey, what's up, millennials? Uh, welcome to another video. Today is June 18th. It is Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to the men out there. If you got a child, then obviously you need to make sure you man up and, and do what you need to do to, to protect and provide for your family and all those people out there who are also father figures. You know, thank you for for doing that as far as influencing others and, and again protecting and, and providing as well. So, anyways, today's video is going to be about um, how to increase your credit score. Everybody could always, you know, everybody could always learn a few more ways to, to make sure that they're doing the best thing they can for their credit history and their future. So, um, right after college, um, I had to do a lot of credit repair, and through that, I learned a lot of little things that I feel like a lot of people would uh, would appreciate uh, that I'd share with. So, here it goes. All right. So, if you're having issues figuring out, um, you know, why your credit score isn't going up. The first thing you need to do is make sure you know where where all your debt is or who you owe, right? So first thing I do is actually make a budget as far as making sure all your bills are being paid on time and then seeing how much money you have to use to actually pay off your debt. So first thing I, I recommend is looking at your credit score. Um, just go online and search, you know, search credit score and there will be plenty of options to choose from as far as uh, getting that document. On it, it will show not only um, any type of credit card accounts that you have open, but any other loans as well, so mortgages and student loans and auto loans, all that stuff, medical bills, all of it will, will be on your um, credit report. All right, so after you figure out what all debt you actually have, then you need to start making payments, obviously, right? So um, if you have a huge debt and it's been sent to collections, I would recommend um, trying to take care of that first. Um, because you know that has the biggest impact on your credit score so um, whether you need to do a lump sum borrow some money from, from family or friends I would definitely you know try to to get rid of that first and let me see here I'm reading some ways to maybe potentially get rid of that faster if you have bonuses like at the end of the year or every quarter or whatever you can use that to pay off your debt if you have tax um, at the end of the year when you get your tax return or at the end of the tax season you can use that to pay off debt um, if you own a house and you have equity, you can take an equity loan to pay off the debt. And I mean, this is it is kind of a, a risk, obviously, because now you you're presenting yourself with a new loan, which is more debt. But getting something off collections is way more important than giving yourself more 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 debt. Um, obviously, stop using your credit cards, right? Put them away, don't use them. Um, and so there's a couple strategies that I use to help me get out of debt uh, with credit cards. So. Um, there's a couple that are called snowball methods um, or strategies. So the first one is to make the minimum payment on every credit card that you have or every you know, bill or whatever you want to call it that you have. And then on one of them, the extra money that you have, you pay toward either the loan that has the highest interest rate so that you are saving money um, over the long run or the one that has uh, the smallest amount of debt period so okay, and the one with a smaller amount makes more sense when um, you know if you're one that struggles to, to be consistent about making payments because once you get that payment out of the way it gives you the confidence to to go ahead and keep it going um, the next thing is to understand what what credit factors are making sure that you're actually um, you know taking them all of them into account the first one is payment history which makes sense uh, payment history is worth 35% of your credit score and it's about you know consistently making on-time payments not missing any payments that is the biggest percentage of your credit score so you need to be cognizant of uh, paying off all your bills on time every single month because that affects your credit score the most the second one is credit utilization ratio credit utilization credit utilization ratio is essentially sorry how much is charged to um, your your credit accounts so for example let's say a credit card you have a credit card that has a thousand dollar credit limit and you have charged three hundred dollars to it okay so your credit card utilization ratio is thirty percent okay so um, that is how it's done and it actually encompasses every single type of uh, credit account situation that you have so if you um, bought houses if you bought um, new windows for your house and um, you had to get a line of credit for that if you have credit cards like those types of things 
anything that has a limit, then that ratio is applicable. And so a satisfactory standard is about 30%. So you can still keep your, you know, what, what that means is to have even a limit in the first place is basically you're balanced every month. If your balance on average is 30% or less, then that's considered okay. Um, and obviously the lower you go and percentage wise, the better it is for your credit score. Okay, so um, make sure you keep that under 30% and the lower the better. So for example, what you could do is if you open a new credit card, then you'll now have access to that other credit limit and that will add to your, your credit limit as a sum, which will reduce your credit utilization ratio. Next one is length of credit history. So basically this is about how long you've had your accounts open. Obviously creditors would like to see that you have long, um, you have a long stint with a credit card which shows that you are reliable and you are stable. You know, not a bunch of little small like, oh, he's had one this one for three months, he's had this one for six months. So um, keep that in mind. Try not to close your accounts because you will be closing off um, your, um, the length of your credit card history. Um, another way to increase your average credit history is to actually become an authorized user on someone else's account. So if someone has great credit history, you know, and they have a big credit limit, you can actually um, become an authorized user on their account, obviously after have to agree to it, and you will now, that, that history will also become part of your history as well. And that obviously, you know, think about the best, um, that's one of the best ways to increase your credit score in general. Um, without even really having to do anything. Obviously, you know, whatever they do now on that account does affect you, but vice versa. You can also receive a credit card from their their credit card that you just uh, got authorized to use, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would just get added to their account, you know, don't, um, don't ask for a credit card, and just reap the benefits of them having great credit history and obviously the average length of credit time. Next one after that is new credit and credit inquiries okay so the fact is anytime you need to open a new credit card account they hit your credit right and it becomes a hard inquiry on your credit report and if you have too many of those and it does drop your points um, uh, every so often I believe it takes 24 months of those to come off your account by the way so they do affect you a little bit and then eventually they kind of um, they don't really affect you anymore your credit score uh, as far as dropping so keep in mind like try not to open a ton of accounts at the same time because those are all gonna be a bunch of hits on your account. Uh, and pretty much, I would say the last one is your credit uh, mix, like the types of credit you have. So there's a chance that maybe your credit score isn't where you think it should be, even though you've been making online payments for a long time, because you don't have a good mix, okay? So if you just have credit cards, then you don't have student loans, you don't have a mortgage, you don't have an auto loan, um, you don't have a line of credit, those types of things. So that could be why your credit score isn't as high as it can be because you need to increase the mix of credit you have. And obviously, you know, the more you open, the more at risk you are to go into debt, things like that. But where risk comes reward. So if you have a credit card and you're thinking about getting the car, you're thinking about getting it for cash, um, then I think you should consider getting a loan to get the car and then maybe using that money to pay off the car so that you can at least show that you are able to, to make um, uh, it doesn't matter what type of credit account you have, you'll be able to make the payments. All right, so after, now that you know the factors that go into, um, you know, that affect your credit score, next is to, you know, make sure you pay your bills, right? So for me and Leah, um, we make sure that we set up everything on auto pay so that we don't even have to think about it, all right? So for example, all of our bills are already done on auto pay, you know, utility bills, cable bill, internet bill, et cetera, et cetera. And then even our credit cards can be done on auto pay. So for example, for me, I have a couple cards that don't have a very, very large limit, um, you know, maybe $600, $750. I will put, I put one um, bill on them and for their Capital One cards, by the way. And those Capital One cards, I can have it so that it pays the bill automatically, the balance. So for example, you can put Hulu on one, and maybe the cell phone on another and then just have those bills charged and paid off automatically every month and so those credit card companies are going to see that okay over a long period of time this person is keeping their utilization ratio low and they're making their payments on time consistently and again i'm not really doing anything right i just set up the auto pay and let it run its course 
Um, and then another thing I had to do is um, I did have um, one time I did get sent to collections. I didn't make my credit card payments, and it's just a whole story that I'm I'm probably gonna end up putting in, in the book I'm making anyway. But essentially, I got sent to collections, and it was just like a really big sore thumb on my credit report. And so after I ended up paying off everything, I, I ended up getting them to take it off the collection. So if you are about to make a, a, a kind of resolve a debt that you have, make sure that they take off that derogatory mark on your account so that, or at least close it so that, you know, it doesn't affect your credit score anymore. All right, and so yeah, let's say you did you decide to do all these things that I'm talking about. You need to make sure you keep monitor, monitoring everything to make sure everything is getting paid, to make sure you don't have any and nothing is popping up on your credit account. So I use Credit Karma. I'm sure there's a lot of other tools and websites that you can use to keep track of that. But that's what I use and I've been seeing steady growth in my credit score and I made sure that all my bills are paid on time and it's just something good to, to kind of monitor your credit to your situation and I definitely recommend it. Yeah, and like I said, in my book, I'm gonna be talking about kind of my journey. I mean, when I was, when I was in college, toward the end of it, I was struggling bad, man. I had to like pay, I had to sell my car just to pay rent and I mean I was just it's all this stuff so that'll be in the book just to kind of give perspective you know someone who's actually gone through it and and that you know you know if I if I made it then you can make it type of thing right so um, that's about it for this video um, if you're interested in you know more tips and tricks like this um, follow me on Facebook YouTube blah 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 um, again the channel name is woke millennials I am starting to work on a blog, uh, so those of you who are more blog people, uh, you'll be have that. And then I'm going to see about a podcast as well. So um, thanks for watching this video. Share with others that you feel like may may find benefit in it, and I'll see you on the next one. Stay woke, millennials.